Hello and welcome to the Ministry of Reconciliation in Truth. We're a homestyle Bible study where we present God's Word from God's perspective and not man's. We study, show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. But we shun profane and vain babbling, for that will lead unto more ungodliness. And things which we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but that the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Now these references can be found in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. And 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I always ask you a very simple question before we start. Do you really believe God when you read his word? as to what he says. Now today's topic may challenge you more so than you ever have been before in listening to any of my teaching videos about whether you truly believe God when you read his word as to what he says. The topic we're looking at today is women. Is it biblical for them to preach and teach from the pulpit. Now, the reason this has come up, there's been a lot of talk, a lot of debates, a lot of arguments, a lot of splits among many, many, many people in the world of so-called religion to include mostly denominationalism in so-called modern Christian churches today. A lot of times it's brought on by people. Man's wisdom or a woman's wisdom is the same thing. They challenge. They'll ask questions. They'll want to know why they demand equality. And it has to do with the movement from stemming back on what I'm assume from women's liberation to the me now or whatever it's called uh, that women are getting involved in today and it's spilled over into the realm of preaching and teaching God's word now one has to take a stand but again like I asked you earlier ladies and gentlemen do you really believe God when you read his word as to what he says I'm going to present this video not from my own accord whatsoever. Not so. I will give you man's perspective on it, and then I will give you God's perspective on it. It's going to be up to you to make the decision whether you want to believe God or do you want to believe man. It's going to be your decision whether you want to rely on God's word or man's word. The choice is going to be yours, no matter what is presented or what is said. In the name of everything that is decent, I will never give out names here. I will not comment from my own accord because that's not biblical to do so. I have a finite mind. I am limited. I am sinful, just like everybody else. What I'm going to do is show you what man says and what man tries to justify against what God says. Then you make up your own mind. I'm not taking sides here. I am one that believes the word of God. I believe what it is God says when I read his word. That's the only stance I take. And I will give you the truth no matter what the consequences might have towards me. Sometimes I become your enemy because I tell you the truth. That's Galatians chapter 4 verse 16. Or I will spend, I am ready to be spent for you, for the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 15. So be it. It's not about me. It's about you and having the truth given to you. What you do with the truth, ladies and gentlemen, is entirely up to you. I'm going to start out today's presentation by giving you some thoughts on what God says about man's wisdom. I have given these in previous studies, but sometimes hearing them over and over again 
tends to help them to sink in. The first one I want to talk about is Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12 says this, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Man is man and women. Keep that in mind. The ways that seemeth right to a man are the ways of death. Now let's go to Isaiah chapter 55, ladies and gentlemen. Starting in verse 8. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 says this. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts, then your thoughts. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, ladies and gentlemen, chapter 3, verse 18. 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 18, says this. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. Verse 19 for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Verse 20, And again the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Continuing on in 1 Corinthians, go to chapter 8, verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2 says this, If any man think he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. And then I want to finish this little segment with a verse out of Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. Colossians is right after Philippians, just before 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 4, verse 6 says this, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Now, these are, from God's perspective, ladies and gentlemen, the wisdom of man, which is the wisdom of women also. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Please remember that. In this presentation, man has come up with many, many Thoughts, many, many discussions, many, many panels, many, many studies on whether or not women should preach or teach from the pulpit. And women have done the same thing. And as the women are the challengers here because it has been predominantly man orientated. They challenge the equality because they will use a verse in scripture that will, to their thoughts and their wisdom, justify the means. Now you have a lot of people out there, including denominations, where you have both sides agree or disagree. You have splits among these people. You know you're not supposed to debate the word of God. It's not biblical to do so. Because if you debate the Word of God, there's always supposedly a winner and a loser. But there is no such thing when you debate the Word of God. God's Word was never meant to be debated. You either believed it or you didn't. God leaves that up to you. It's called free will. But if you challenge man when they're presenting the Word of God to you from God's perspective now, not man's, from God's perspective who is he really lashing out at? Or who is she really lashing out at? But God. And let's let scripture back that up again. Not from my perspective. First Thessalonians, ladies and gentlemen. Chapter 4, verse 8. First Thessalonians, right after the book of Colossians. Chapter 4, verse 8 says this. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, 
who has given unto us his Holy Spirit. They're lashing out to God. They don't know that. They don't believe that. They're again going after what you present, even though you present the word of God from God's perspective and not man's. Now, they have the argument, as I would call it, or maybe there's a better word for it. I don't know. Uh, but their presentation, their rationalization, I guess, or whatever you want to call it, comes from a verse in Galatians, ladies and gentlemen. And we need to go to Galatians. Chapter 3. The book of Galatians, just after 2 Corinthians. Galatians chapter 3, and we're going to start in verse 26. Verse 26 of Galatians chapter 3 says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. All. That includes men and women. Verse 27, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Verse 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And verse 29 says, and if, any, and if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. They will look and they will present to you, especially verse 28, where it says, and I'll read it again. Verse 28 says, there's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female. For we all are one in Christ Jesus. That is the verse they will use to justify the fact that they belong, just as men do, on the pulpit, preaching and teaching the word of God. Now, I'm going to tell you that is from man's perspective, ladies and gentlemen. This is what's from God's perspective on that verse. Don't take my word for it. Please read it and check it out. You read Galatians chapter 3. The whole theme of the chapter that drives home in crescendos with verse 28 is about salvation. The salvation that you can have. I simply believe in the gospel by faith and faith alone, coming to Jesus Christ as an individual, believing the finished work of the cross, found in the doctrine for the body of Christ, which is Romans who Philemon, given to Paul by personal revelation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery. It's talking about salvation. It is equal for men and women, young and old. Doesn't matter. He died for all. That is from God's perspective now. Please read it and read it carefully. You can reject God's perspective and you can continue with man's perspective on this. Absolutely you can. The choice is going to be yours. I'm just giving you what man says about this verse and what God says about this verse. Please check it out. And all of this stems back also with the argument that too many men will use that are in authoritarian positions, so-called, by, given by their peers, by the way, uh, in, especially in denominations. They will say it's not biblical for a woman to teach and preach from the pulpit. Now, let me remind you about something. These are men that come from a denomination. Ladies and gentlemen, denominations aren't even biblical. Okay, Keep that in mind. There's no such thing as a denomination found in Scripture anywhere. Yet they have their own doctrine, their own faith statements. All this they have so they can control and give you what it is they want you to believe. Just keep that in mind. They tend to use that much more than 
the word of God from God's perspective. Because if they use God from God's perspective, his word, they will have to change. They will have to rethink. They will probably lose out on a lot of numbers for their congregation, which include makes your denomination look bad, makes it look bad to the world. But anyway, their argument is going to be that God does not allow it. Now let me give you, I gave you a man's perspective as to why women think and why women believe they should be in the pulpit preaching and teaching the word of God. Now I'm going to give you what God says from his perspective and you make up your own mind. I'm not going to tell you one way or the other. I told you before, I believe what it is I read. I believe what God says when I read his word. And I leave it at that. Let's start out in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. Verse 9 says, In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Verse 10, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Verse 12. Verse 11. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. Verse 12. Let the women, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to absurd authority over the man but to be in silence. Verse 13, for Adam was first formed, then Eve. Verse 14, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Verse 15, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness and sobriety. Too many people try to explain away all these verses that I just read to you, especially 11 and 12. This is God's perspective, ladies and gentlemen. This is God's word coming from God, not from man. He says in verse 11, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Verse 12, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to upsert authority over the man, but to be in silence. Now he says, I suffer. Well, let's look at that word suffer here, just to make sure. I don't do a lot of playing on words, but I do believe the clarity of this word would help some people. The word comes from the Greek translation, epitrepo, spelled E-P-I-T-R-E-P-O, epitrepo. It means to turn over, not to turn over, to allow or to permit. That's what it means. You can take any of those and put it in the place of suffer. You wouldn't do any harm to scripture. It'll give you a pretty good example, pretty good of idea of what the word means. Now this is Paul, ladies and gentlemen, telling his follower Timothy, his disciple Timothy, when he goes out to teach and to preach, this is what he just teach and preach, this whole book's written. Now, Paul says in some places where he says things are not a commandment of God, but this is what I would feel is appropriate. He doesn't say that here. So we understand from previous studies that what Paul writes under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost from the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ gave to him personally his commandments of God. You can't deny that if you believe the word of God as to what he says when you read his word, if you cannot, then you'll have to work that out with God, not with man. Leave man out of the equation. Because if you start listening to man, man will take you down the wrong path. You may win a fight in this world 
when it comes to something that has been done differently in the past when it comes to the Word of God. But in the end, you will lose the battle. Because there is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Now I want to share with you, open your Bibles to the Old Testament. This is probably the greatest example of when the nation of Israel had decided to let their women be in charge. It's a very lengthy, but I'll try to read just the scope of it. But it has to do with the women going against everything God had asked them to do. Jeremiah went to these women and to the people, the men, and warned them not to do what it is they're doing. And I'll give it it's in synopsis, but I'll start in verse 18, or excuse me, verse 15 of Jeremiah chapter 44. After Jeremiah gave them this warning to stop doing what it is they're doing, they said in verse 15 that all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense to other gods, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt and Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying, Verse 16, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we shall not hearken unto thee. Verse 17, they said, But we will certainly do whatsoever thing that goeth forth out of our own mouths to burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done we and our fathers our kings and our princesses in the cities of judea and the streets of jerusalem and then we plenty of vesicles and were well off and saw no evil verse 18 but since we left to burn stop burning incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted in all things, and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. Verse 19, But when we burned incense to the queen of heaven, and poured out the drink offerings unto her, we did make her cakes to worship her, and pour out drink offerings unto her, with or without our men. It was very bad to their demise. Look what they were doing. I'm not saying man was any good either in the Old Testament. Trust me, they got so bad that they burn and sacrifice their children on altars to false gods. But it's God's authority. It's God's word. It's God's prerogative. He is the potter. We are the clay. You can accept that or you can't. You can believe God's word as to what he says. Or you can reject it. You look at women today in the world now, and equality is being pushed like never before. So be it. That's the world. The world is full of lies. The world is governed and ruled by Satan, whether you believe it or not. And I foresee them making great bounds, being successful in every aspect, even overtaking many things that man had ruled at one time. Absolutely, I see that coming. Now, as for the Word of God, I presented to you from his perspective what he says goes, and I gave you man's perspective. And I told you what happens with man's wisdom when they think they're doing something right. The end is going to be the way of death. You make up your own mind, ladies and gentlemen. You can go to a building that has a lady at the pulpit teaching, preaching, leading the worship, and claiming to be a person of God, ordained even by a man, man seminary college, man-made theology college, man-made doctrine man's perspective 
of doctrine of supposedly the body of Christ. If you will look back, ladies and gentlemen, through all of Scripture, from Genesis to the book of Revelation, you don't read about people having women as pastors, teachers, and preachers to men. You have women that can be teachers to other women and to children, yes. That's explained in God's Word. But it says nothing in the Bible about them being on the pulpit preaching and teaching to men. Again, I'm not taking a stance and telling you this is what I believe. I believe what it is God says, and I leave it at that. And I accept it because I humble myself. It isn't my wisdom that's going to get me to heaven. It isn't what I think God says that's going to get me to heaven. It isn't what man thinks about things in God's word that's going to get me to heaven. It's only Jesus Christ, my great God, Lord and Savior, that can get me to heaven. And I have no problem with male or female telling somebody the gospel of Jesus Christ that can save somebody. Jesus Christ died for all, male or female. When it comes to salvation, giving the gospel of salvation, absolutely. Precious is the feet of those that come with the gospel of Jesus Christ. What is the gospel of salvation that is predominantly found in Scripture that is in Romans through Philemon, the doctrine for the body of Christ, that was hammered home in Galatians chapter 3, verse 28? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, you've heard it many, many times, and you will continue to hear it throughout all my teachings. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Verse 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, wherein ye also have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory that which I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, in verse 4, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day, according to the Scriptures. There's no harm. That is the gospel that can save you, ladies and gentlemen. You can have eternal life. You can hear it from a man. You can hear it from a woman. There's no difference when it comes to salvation. Because a good teacher of the Word of God will just give you this and leave it alone, will not add to it, will not, quote, do sermons. It's so funny because sermons are not even a biblical word. It isn't even in the Bible. Yet man has done thousands and thousands and thousands of sermons at to worship, and women are doing them too. That is the wrong thing to do whether you're male or female. It's not scriptural. You should be giving the Word of God, just the Word of God. If you have to tell stories and involve people so they come and listen to you so you get a following, you're in it for the wrong reasons. You give it so you have a chance to give them the gospel of Jesus Christ that can save you. This preaching has gone so far out of whack being from the pulpit, being a man, authoritarian thing in denominations, which is very, very, very comical because, ladies and gentlemen, there's no such thing as denominations in Scripture to start with. Yet that's where the biggest arguments, debates, and splits are. How ironic is that? If they just humble themselves, get over themselves, let the wisdom of God take over. Look at it from God's perspective. Quit trying to obtain all oh, man's wisdom can give you the bachelor's degree, the master's degree, the PhD in theology, systematic theology, whatever it is you want to teach and preach. And you attend these because you deserve it because you have done this on your own. And Paul comes along and says, I uh, suffer women not to assert authority over man. And then they hit a 
big stumbling wall, don't they? That was put in scripture, ladies and gentlemen, for a reason. It wasn't put there by mistake. I showed you an example back in the Old Testament, what can happen and what did happen. And it can happen today, ladies and gentlemen. And it's happening already. Again, you take a stand. I have given you the truth of God's word against man's finite wisdom and his thoughts as to why the equality of men and women in the pulpit should be happening today. You make up your own mind. Don't take my word for it. You look it up against God's word, what your thoughts are, and see what he says. If it doesn't line up with God, guess what? There is something wrong with your thoughts, not God's. Because God's thoughts and God's ways are higher than yours. And don't ever forget that. You need to believe so much now, more than ever, whether you believe God is what he says when you read his word. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening. I appreciate it very much. We are the Ministry of Reconciliation and Truth. We'd love to hear from you. We're the Ministry of Reconciliation and Truth, 301 Becker Street, Apartment 31. Turtle Lake, Wisconsin, 54889. The Ministry of Reconciliation in Truth, 301 Becker Street, Apartment 31. Turtle Lake, Wisconsin, 54889. Again, this is Robert Haller. Thanking you. Until next time.